I'm packing up to go and the party's still going on down there. January. Um, the walleye bite's starting to slow down a little bit as it always does this time of year. There's a ton of pressure this year um, making everything a little bit tougher. So I'm going to show you a few methods on how to catch them better and how to more effectively call fish into say a permanent shack or a portable shack. Or I'm going to show you a little, a little deal I've uh, been playing with that puts more walleye on the ice. Norm, would you stop with that? Okay. Huh. Good boy. If you follow ice fishing and, and spend any time on Lake of the Woods, you'll know that the two most effective baits are a rattle bait and just a straight jig and minnow with a live minnow. Um, this time of year, the walleyes spread out a little more they go into deep water a little bit more and uh, you need a rattle bait to try to call them in a little bit to you. But the problem is they're not really that inclined to just eat a piece of minnow off a big hunk of metal. So you probably haven't seen anything like this before. It's a little outlandish, but it does work. Um, I've got like a custom drop shot sinker and a drop shot hook. I'm going to put a live minnow on. I'm going to bash that thing in the bottom like crazy. When that walleye comes in, he's going to see a nice little treat just swimming in front of him. And that's a deadly combo there. So we're out kind of on a meat spot right now. Uh, I'm looking for dinner. We could catch a big one. We could catch a lake trout. But right now the goal is just to, to put some fish topside. As we kind of get a little more into winter, um, mobility obviously gets a little harder. Um, Obviously fishing out of a permanent shack like this or a wheelhouse is super nice and, and simple. Um, often the problem is your your catch rate and your productivity goes down when you're spending time in these. But if you use things like the Lake Master V2 map chip and um, use techniques that call fish in, then you can get away with being a little bit more immobilized and still catching fish, I mean. Okay, so you can see I've got that um, drop shot smashing into the bottom. And then you can just see my minnow hovering there. And I'm just raising all kinds of commotion down there. A lot more, a lot more commotion than I could raise with uh, just a rattle spoon. So I use this soft rod just so there's no resistance from the top side. There's one coming in. There's going to be resistance from my big heavy weight down there, make no mistake, but at least I can limit it on the top end. Here he comes. There, he's got it. Okay, he's eating it. See what I mean by low resistance? It's just kind of taking it super soft rod. I'm just going to sweep into him. Nice fish. This is a uh, soft rod, so it's not going to be a big fish, but it It'll be a decent one, like a nice eater. There's another one coming in. We're gonna stop toiling with them. I want to get back down there quick. Let's see what we have here, Normie. We have. It's gotta be a walleye. Oh yeah, it's a nice one. Okay, nice 17 incher to start. That's wicked. And you can see how long I let him eat it for. He's just barely hooked right there. So, okay, less talky, more fishy. There's another one down there. Okay. Stay there, baby. Hopefully I made enough fuss in the mud that 
this one's going to stick around. And this is another beauty about the drop shot. It's super heavy, so I don't have to piddle around. It's just going to drop nuke right back down there um, in this deeper water that you are forced to fish this time of year. Hey, Norman. Okay, here he comes. Oh, look at this. It's going to be timed beautifully. Here we go. Here we go. Oh yeah, the big one saw it. He's looking at the weight, looking at the weight. Hit the weight. Okay. Uh, that was a backfire. <laughs> There's another one coming in. As soon as he sees that minnow, just gonna let the weight go a little down. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah, he sees her. He's thinking long and hard. There's really no decision though. It's a resistance free live minnow. Come on, girly. Yep, he's got it. So, you're gonna ask why I'm waiting so long to set the hook. Well, you saw that last one. It was just barely hooked. So, like, I, he's got no resistance. I opened my bail. He should be good there. Yeah, I mean, perfect. I can tell on the graph that it's an eater size walleye. If it's an undersized one, just get it out of there. You don't need to let him risk choking it, or if it's a great big one, don't let them, don't risk it, but it's just like Lindy rigging in the winter is all this is. It's gonna be another nice eater, yep. Ah, perfect fish, look at that, save my minnow. All that time I spent on it, letting it eat it, and it's just right there, if you can believe it. It's funny too, when you get to fishing late in the, or later into the winter like this, your bite window shrinks, so. Where at the beginning of the year, you know, maybe you'll catch them really consistently for an hour from th three to four o'clock. Well, mid to late January and into February, your bite window might shrink to 10 minutes. So, I mean, I did kind of eat my words on one of those fish in there. There were just so many in that school and they were fired up for a second that uh, one actually tonked my weight. Um, that's not the intention of this program. Uh, I suspect that fish would eat anything. Uh, sometimes when you get a few around like that, they just get uh, cranked up. So that's what happened there. So this, you know, in general, I'm going to catch more more fish doing this, but there's that's going to happen once in a while. Um, so it's it's a risk. I suppose you could have a, a buckshot on the bottom with uh, with some meat on it, but the problem with that is that's how you catch burb is bashing a big buckshot into bottom the whole time um, without e seeing it on your flasher or on your graph, just bashing that buckshot. And uh, I don't want to be dealing with burbot while I'm trying to catch walleyes, especially later in the year when they start to go wild. So here we go. Oh, he's a nut. So crushed it. I'm not going to have to give him too much time. You can tell a lot um, by the way they hit it. So, oh, there's another one down there with them too. Um, that one just taunted it. So I don't need to sit there and let him chew on it. Um, I kind of match my aggression to their aggression. If they just, watch out buddy. If they just come in and slowly engulf it, then yeah, I'm gonna let them chew it for a while. But that thing just knocked slack in it. So I've got a real stout little Gamagatsu hook on here. Um, you don't have to crank on them. Nice fish again, buddy. Okay, okay, another beauty, like probably a 17. He's hooked outside of the mall, finally lost my minnow on that one. That's sweet though, that's catching them. And I always preach all the time to make hay while the sun shines, so I'm not gonna mess around forever. I wanna catch one more. Come here, buddy, come on, come on. Better measure him though for legality purposes. Yeah, a 17 and a half. Got a couple like that. Come here, buddy. Okay, well, the dog can stay out there. Using like a small to medium sized um, minnow, either chub or a pearl dace. Like I said, I'm not hunting huge fish here, so I don't need a huge, huge bait. 
And the idea is that the fish are a little more fickle, so, oh, there's one I'm going to drop to. Now, if I just had an 8 ounce jig, which is common for ice fishing, um, I'd be really taking my time getting back down here. But this cannonball, I don't have a huge weight on here, maybe 3 8 and the rattles are slowing it down a bit. But look at its sail down there. It's moving fast. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, that's a good one. Crushed it. Start the car, Suzanne. We're going home. <laughs> oh boy. Hey, come here. Oh yeah. Come. There we go. <laughs> Another beauty. That's crushing them now. You can tell we're kind of settling into the night bite. They're eating it a little bit better. That guy's down the gullet a little bit, but that, uh, that was an awesome little session. Um, hope I could teach you something there. Uh, glad I could show you how well it works. Um, so, you know, I'm not just making up a, a technique. This dead stick's not far from the shack and the fish would have had to swim the... through it to get here. Not one of them hit it. So that gives you an idea of how important pounding on that bottom can be and and just attracting them right now so as far as rods go for this kind of thing um you want something that you would use for like a dead stick uh something like a 32 to 36 inch um medium light uh just something that has little resistance because this is a it's a visual bite too um you see it more than you feel it. So you want it to be able to load up and load up. And then you just need a little bit of backbone just to fight the fish, if you're, especially if you're targeting bigger fish, like in Lake Winnipeg or something. Um, I'll link some rods below that'll be good, but you definitely don't want a pool cue for this. You're going to tear the hook. Uh, you're not going to allow the fish to load up on it. So just something with a nice deep flex like that. This rod they don't make anymore. It's an old one I've had forever. And, uh, uh, I wish I had 10 more, but one more tip, obviously ice fishing rods aren't drop shot equipped. So I put a piece of elastic band on there and I just tuck my rig under that elastic band just so it's neatly stored. I can put it in my rod case and not have, uh, not have line flopping all over the place because it is kind of a higher maintenance technique for sure. I'll show you the original I used. Got a BT drop shot weight rattle collar. There's my dropper about 12 inches up. Um, but I've got a much more simplified one now that I've been making. Uh, I've got a rattle built in to this weight, pre-tied, you just lace it on and you're good to go. You don't have to have any kind of special knot tying skills or anything like that. So hopefully you have a bunch of those ready to go here soon. Uh, if you're interested in getting out ice fishing this year and want to rent this shack, uh, can fish up to four people comfortably and you stay warm and um, you know, everyone typically has a good time. Uh, it's a great way to get someone into ice fishing and just being comfortable while still catching fish. Um, hit me up. Uh, I'll drop my email address below for bookings. Um, there's still quite a few for this winter and I'm always moving it. By the time this video comes out, it'll be on a different spot. Uh, it's super mobile. So I'm always moving it. I'm always staying on top of the bite out here. So uh, hit me up if you want to check it out. It, it's not going to break the bank and it's a great way to get out fishing this winter.